Hi there, and thank you for viewing our video. This video aims to explain how the Shimmer Tree GSR Plus unit can be used to acquire both GSR and PPG data using the Shimmer platform. The Shimmer Tree GSR Plus sensor is recognized as one of the leading tools in the research and commercial industry for wearable wireless sensing of GSR signals. The sensor has been used extensively in hundreds of research applications and commercial uses in neuromarketing and neuroscience. Firstly, let's introduce the hardware required to collect data. Beginning with the sensor. As you can see, the Shimmer Tree GSR Plus sensor is quite lightweight, weighing just 31 grams with dimensions of 65 mm by 32 by 12. Each Shimmer sensor comes with a wrist strap for placement on the body depending on your specific application. For most applications, measuring GSR from the fingers is the best site for a strong signal. However, that is subject to the user's particular preference for the use. With our system, the unit is typically placed on the wrist with biophysical leads connecting the unit to the two GSR electrodes. GSR dry electrodes come standard with our kits, but compatible gel electrodes such as these can be purchased separately on our website. The GSR Plus unit can also be used to measure PPG or optical pulse. We provide the user with two choices for measuring PPG. Firstly, from the finger with our optical pulse sensing probe, or also from the ear with the shimmer ear clip. Also worth mentioning is that the GSR Plus sensor has the full 9 off inertial sensing capability of our standard Shimmer Tree IMU motion sensor. All these signals can be measured simultaneously. The next item of hardware you require is a base or a dock. For today's example, you can see our consensus base 15, which enables the multi-sensor management of 15 shimmer units at once. We also have a base 6 and a single dock that provides similar functionality when working with smaller quantities of sensors. The base connects directly to your PC or laptop by a USB port. The consensus base in conjunction with our consensus software application allows users to configure multiple units at once. That includes setting sampling rate, enabling and disabling what sensing signals you want to measure and setting the appropriate firmware you require for your data collection. The base also allows for simultaneous charging of multiple units. We are now going to focus our attention on our Consensus software application. For the purposes of this exercise, I am using the Consensus Pro version of this software. When you start the application, you are presented with three core tabs. Manage Devices, Live Data and Manage Data. I will explain the function of each tab in this video. The first tab is Manage Devices. This tab is essential for when you are starting your trial, as it allows you to perform a number of functions including programming the firmware, configuring the devices and importing the data from the device's SD card. All these functions should be considered before you start collecting data. Today we are going to collect both logged and live data from the Shimmer Tree GSR Plus device. The Shimmer Tree GSR Plus has an inbuilt SD card for collecting data and also has Bluetooth capability for streaming data live. The first step in the data collection process is to ensure the firmware is set correctly. I select the unit I want to collect data from and then click the firmware here. And the firmware I want to use today is login stream so I simply select this and write to the unit. Next we must configure this unit. First thing I want to do is set a unique trial name. Following this I want to consider what logging method to use. With the undock dock method, when I undock the shimmer from the consensus base, it would automatically start logging data to the inbuilt SD card on the unit. With the user button option, the orange user button on the shimmer acts as a start and stop button. For the purpose of this I'm going to use the undock method. Next I need to decide what signals I want enabled for my trial. This is done by highlighting on a particular signal. If it's greyed out, it's not enabled. If it's highlighted, it is enabled. The range can also be set on these signals. Again, for the purpose of this trial, I'm going to use the wide range accelerometer, gyroscope, GSR and optical pulse. The sampling rate can also be set at this point. The sampling rates can be set from a minimum of 1 Hz to a maximum of 2048 Hz. For the purpose of this video, let's set the sampling rate at 20 Hz. This is done by inputting to the box 
and pressing enter. We can also add algorithms to this trial if we so wish, such as PPG to the heart rate. The final tab to consider is our calibration settings. At this point, if I'm happy with the sensing signals I've enabled and the various other settings, I can write these settings to the shimmer by pressing right config down here. So my unit is now ready to start collecting data. Firstly, I'm going to undock the unit from the consensus base. It is now logging data to the inbuilt SD card. This is verified by the intermittent flashing green LED on the unit. The LEDs on the shimmer units indicate what communication state they are, they are in. The other option, which was the user button, if I had selected that by pressing the unit on and off with the user button here, would log to the SD card or not. For simplicity, I'll place this unit on my left wrist. For GSR signals in particular, we recommend keeping movement to a minimum. Therefore, placement on the non-dominant hand is recommended. As you can see, I have the biophysical leads coming from the unit to the GSR electrodes on my fingers. I'm also going to connect the PPG sensor, the ear clip in this instance, to the unit, and this is connected to my earlobe. Next, I'm going to introduce you to the live data tab on our consensus software. This, as you might have guessed, is where live data can be visualized. First thing you will need to do is ensure that the devices you want to stream data from are paired with your PC or laptop and visible in consensus. Following this, we select the devices we want to stream from, connect the Bluetooth, and once a Bluetooth connection is established, we can begin streaming signals from this device. We can also record the live data from this device and store in a local database on this software application. There are a number of different options for plotting the signals. We can have all signals on one plot, or we can have different signals on different plots as we wish. The plot settings can also be configured to your needs, such as changing the X and Y axis scale range. Another option when recording live data is to add event markers to highlight moments of interest. You can add the event marker here. There are two types of event markers. The pulse adds a single marker to the data, while toggle sets the event marker over a period that is defined by the user pressing, starting and stopping the toggle event marker. I'll show a couple of examples here. The pulse is a single marker as you can see while the toggle is defined by start stop. These event markers are time correlated with the data you are currently recording. So I've now completed collecting data for this demo. The next step is to retrieve the data. Firstly, the live stream data is automatically saved onto the local database. I can see this in manage data under the trial name I said earlier, GSOR demo. We can see here the transmission rate was very high, with little to none drop packets. We can also see the various signals we collected. The next step is to import the log data from the unit's SD card. I'll now place the unit back in the consensus base. I'll select the unit in question and select the import button. This process is pretty straightforward and intuitive. The software starts by reading the unit's SD card and then presents you with the data available to import. On completion, you will see the data is now in the Manage Data tab. So for the trial, GSR demo, I have two data sets. One, as we mentioned, with live PC recording, and the other with the data from the SD card. The final step is to export the data if we wish to process further in advanced data manipulation programs such as MATLAB, for example. We select the trial or trials we want to export. The raw data can be exp exported in a number of different data and time formats to the user's preference. Also at this point, filters and algorithms can be applied to the data if appropriate.
finally we can see the data has been exported and is available in the local folder on your PC. So that concludes our demo video on collecting GSR and PPG data with the Shimmer Tree GSR Plus sensor and consensus software platform. We hope you found this video beneficial. If you have any questions about the sensor or the data collection process in general, please email us at info at We look forward to hearing from you.